Simpson Rommer is the sixth episode of the 26th season of the animated television series The Simpsons and first aired in November 2014. The episode is a crossover of two of Matt Groening's TV series, The Simpsons and Futurama. Remarkably, although the title of the episode works perfectly as a play on the names of both Groening's shows, it was previously used long before Futurama was ever a series. Back in 1996, the title Simpson Rama was used as the name of a compilation of Simpsons comic book stories. In the television episode, the Simpsons family encounter the Planet Express crew when they arrive in Springfield to stop the family from destroying the future. The ambitious project was first announced in July 2013. Simpsons showrunner at the time, Al Jean, saw the collaboration with Futurama as a fitting way to pay tribute to the series, which had been cancelled. The episode received mixed reviews from critics, but was greatly appreciated by Futurama fans as it gave them one last chance to see their beloved characters from the series, in addition to seeing them in the universe of The Simpsons. Having said that, it's not the only time the worlds of The Simpsons and Futurama have collided. Far from it. With the success of The Simpsons and Futurama's television shows, a run of comic book series was launched, revolving around the respective universes. The Simpsons comics ran from November 1993 to October 2018, while the Futurama comics spanned from November 2000 to July 2018. Both series were published by the Bongo Comics Group, a publishing company founded in 1993 by Groening, along with Steve and Cindy Vance and Bill Morrison. The company was named in honor of Groening's rabbit character from his comic strip Life in Hell, and predominantly published comics related to The Simpsons, Futurama, and SpongeBob SquarePants, as well as original material. There was also a crossover release that brought the worlds of The Simpsons and Futurama together that was published independent of the two series in the US and part of the Futurama series in the UK. The crossover was made up of two volumes, divided into four chapters. The series consists of Futurama Simpsons Infinitely Secret Crossover Crisis and The Simpsons Futurama Crossover Crisis 2. All editions were written by Simpsons comics writer Ian Boothby. In the liner notes of the first chapter, editor Bill Morrison explains how the project came about and the struggles they had making the collaboration happen. Specifically, the difficulty Boothby had coming up with a premise that would bring the worlds together. Basically, once he had the green light to make the project happen, he locked himself in his office until he found a solution to this problem. Eventually, the answer came in the form of the brain spawn. Inspired by the providers from Star Trek the original series, which ran from September 1966 to June 1969, the brains spawn are non-humanoid sentient beings that appear as disembodied brains and use telekinesis to move around. The brains spawn have existed in the Futurama universe since the Big Bang, and they possess the ability to impair people's intelligence. Now I am leaving Earth for no reason! At the time of the first crossover crisis, they had only appeared in a single television episode of Futurama. The third season's The Day the Earth Stood Stupid, when everyone in the world except Fry loses their intelligence, which first aired in February 2001. Stop acting so stupid! <laughs> Futurama Simpsons Infinitely Secret Crossover Crisis 1, the issue featured the story Somewhere Over the Brainbow and was released in August 2002. The story opens with Fry reading a Simpsons comic book as the Planet Express crew head to the living planet of Nerdius 12. They are taking the biggest comic book collection in the universe to the planet, where it will be sealed in liquid diamond forever, as this is apparently the only way they will become collectibles. While unloading the comics, the crew are hit by the brain spawn stupefaction ray. Like in the day the Earth stood stupid, Fry is the only being in the universe unaffected. I know what's going on here. You've all become idiots. Hey, let's all join the reform party. Whoa! Oh, oh yeah! By throwing objects at the brains, Fry manages to make Leela and Bender intelligent again, but the crew are then trapped inside various comics and adverts by the brains. Bender manages to use a spoiler ray to force the brains to reveal their plan, which is to seal up various forms of art in order to stifle the collective intelligence of Earth to make it unintelligent enough for them to invade. The brains bring the rest of the Planet Express crew to Nerdius 12 before trapping the entire group in an old Simpsons comic. With the exception of Fry and Nibbler, the crew get amnesia and wander off into the world of Springfield. Bender goes into Moe's and meets up with Homer. Fry ends up at Springfield Elementary, where he's mistaken as the substitute teacher for Bart's class. Meanwhile, Leela sees Lisa being bullied by classmates and helps her stand up for herself. Hermes and Zoidberg end up at the power plant, where they attract the attention of Mr. Burns and Smithers. Scruffy also becomes an assistant groundskeeper at one point and has a disagreement with groundskeeper Willie. Marge mistakes Nibbler for a baby and gives him milk, which consequently causes him to lose his memory as well. Finally, the chapter concludes with Farnsworth being arrested by the police, who assume that he's insane. Because I dared to dream of my own race of atomic monsters, atomic supermen with octagonal shape.
Futurama Simpsons Infinitely Secret Crossover Crisis 2 featured the story Liquid Diamond is Forever and was released in December 2002. Picking up right where Chapter 1 left off, Bender is thrown out of Moe's after getting involved with the love testing machine. The Later, Homer gets Flanders to give Bender a place to stay, though he soon has to leave after he gets involved with Flanders' jukebox. At the Springfield Retirement Castle, Professor Frank overhears Farnsworth talking with Grandpa Simpson and realizes that Farnsworth is a genius, inspiring Frank to break Farnsworth out. At the Springfield Country Club, Zoidberg saves Mr. Burns from choking, which leads the billionaire to make Zoidberg his personal physician. Back at Springfield Elementary, Fry manages to convince Bart that they are both in a comic book. At the power plant, Zoidberg sneezes over Hermes, which causes him to regain his memory. Soon though, Mr. Burns overhears the two talking about the future, leading Mr. Burns to kidnap them. Lisa takes Leela back to her house, where she sees Nibbler with Marge, which gives Leela back her memory. Nibbler fills everyone in on what happened with the brain spawn. Fry and Bart arrive home, followed by Homer and Bender. Nibbler senses danger due to Mr. Burns, so everyone heads to the power plant. During the trip, Fry and Lisa get left behind. The rest arrive at the power plant to find Mr. Burns, who threatens to harm Zoidberg, unless the group take him to the future. Farnsworth and Frank reveal that they've invented a device that might get the Planet Express crew back to their own world, which Burns takes. Smithers then takes it from Burns and reveals himself to really be Amy in disguise. Then the real Smithers, dressed up as Mr. Burns, retakes the device. Just when the real Mr. Burns is about to use the device, aliens from the Galactic Time Council, who look like Kang and Kodos, arrive. Mr. Burns and Smithers run off, after which it's revealed that the aliens are in fact the result of Lisa playing the holophoner with Fry doing the voices. Frank and Farnsworth use their device, which causes a tear in the comic book and shatters the barriers around the book. The Planet Express crew finally go home, where it's revealed that New New York is now filled with citizens of Springfield in an ironic twist. Originally, this conclusion, though open-ended, was simply intended to be a joke and the end of the Simpsons Futurama comic book crossover. However, years later, Boothby used it as inspiration for the third and fourth parts of the crossover crisis storyline. The Simpsons Futurama Crossover Crisis 2, Chapter 1, features the story Slaves to New New York and was released in January 2005. The issue opens with Futurama and Simpsons anchormen Morbo and Kent Brockman detailing news reports from their respective point of views. From Morbo's perspective, the cast of the Simpsons comic book have come to life and invaded the city. Alternatively, Brockman declares that the entire town of Springfield is having a mass hallucination. Bender, Fry, and Leela are watching TV when Farnsworth enters and tells them why this is all happening. Good news! There's a report on TV with some very bad news! Farnsworth and his nemesis Ogden Wernstrom were at a meeting with other scientists, showing off their new inventions. After Wernstrom destroyed Farnsworth's project, Farnsworth discovered that he had one of Fry's Simpsons comic books and decided to open up a barrier between the comic and the real world by cutting up the book. As a result, everyone in Springfield got teleported to New New York. After Farnsworth suggested making the fictional characters into slaves, authorities start capturing the Springfield residents. However, the Simpsons family managed to escape and end up at the Planet Express headquarters. The family and the Planet Express crew then head out into space, while the rest of the residents of Springfield receive slavery jobs, with the exception of Mr. Burns, who, instead, becomes Mom's boyfriend, and Smithers, who becomes Zap Brannigan's new assistant. Eventually, the Simpsons and Planet Express crew return to New York. In Farnsworth Lab, Bart accidentally activates Farnsworth's literary reality-tearing machine. In response, Bender throws it into New York Public Library, causing all the characters in the library books to come to life and start taking over the city. The Simpsons Futurama Crossover Crisis 2, Chapter 4, features the story The Red Menace and was released in March 2005. Picking up shortly after where the previous issue left off, other fictional characters from New York Public Library have come to life. However, unlike the Springfield residents, they didn't like the idea of being slaves and instead took over the city. The Simpsons are with the Planet Express crew in space. Just when they think they are safe, they encounter the Nimbus. Due to a mutiny, Smithers is now the captain. After Marge and Leela inform him about Mr. Burns and Mom's relationship, Smithers heads back to Earth. The Simpsons return to the Planet Express headquarters. There, Lisa discovers how to stop the attacks. When she asks the What If Machine what they would do if they knew how to beat the fictional characters, the Simpsons head to the library, where the Vortex has transformed all the characters into real people. They throw a page from the first Simpsons comic book, with a picture of a giant Homer in it, into the Vortex, and the giant Homer from the magazine comes to life. They tell giant Homer that there is beer, and he starts to walk around the streets of the city in search of it, trampling and killing several of the literary characters in the process. The characters who survive give up and go into the Vortex to return to the books they came from. However, there is still a problem. The giant Homer is about to destroy the city. They decide to use the Jumbotron, on which they display Marge holding pork chops, to lead him into the Vortex. 
Before the Simpsons jump into the vortex themselves, they travel with the Planet Express crew and pick up everyone else from Springfield, the issue, and, ultimately, the Simpsons Futurama comic book crossover end on an ominous note. It's revealed that, although Mr. Burns was returned to Springfield, Mum has a sample of his DNA, and she has made a clone of him that will awaken in a year. She tells her clone that when he awakes, they will be together again, and then they will teach the universe the true meaning of pain, and it will be excellent. It's debatable as to whether Crossover Crisis is a better story than Simpsorama, and whether Crossover Crisis should have been the story that The Simpsons used to mark the historic crossover of the two series on the small screen. There are a number of reasons why this wasn't the case, regardless of the quality of the stories. The main problem is that, while most Futurama fans would also be fans of The Simpsons, the opposite isn't necessarily true. So, a lot of Simpsons fans might not be familiar with the universe of Futurama, specifically in regards to the brain spawn. This means that a significant portion of the episode would have had to be dedicated to explaining their origin to the audience, squandering valuable time on tedious exposition. Additionally, Simpsons fans might not be familiar with some of the secondary characters of Futurama, so not only would the episode have to explain who the characters are, Who are you? Scruffy? The janitor? But a lot of the jokes referencing the distinct characteristics could also fall flat. You lost the woman of your dreams, but you still have Zoidberg. You all still have Zoidberg! With all this in mind, it makes sense that The Simpsons made the decision to go with a completely new story that was much more straightforward, even if it would have been great to see the Futurama comic book series come to life on the small screen. Had Crossover Crisis been the story they used for the Simpsons Futurama collaboration episode for the series, critical reviews may have been better than they were for Simpsorama. Still, both crossovers are greatly appreciated by hardcore Futurama fans, as both stories are a fitting celebration of the work of Graining and his contribution to the art of animation with the intricate worlds of the Simpsons and Futurama that he created. You all still have Zoidberg!